This is the DMT 1 to 1 show, episode 16, on the 4th of July 2013, an interview with Steve Thompson, the CEO at Pouster. It's great to be here on the 1 to 1 show with uh, Steve Thompson, the creative director and CEO at Pouster. So, hi Steve, and great to have you on. How's it going today? Yeah, good. Good day. Busy day. Yeah, <laughs> definitely a busy day. And uh, well, the, the sun is kind of coming in and out here in London, so it's good to record outside for once. I'm, I'm doing most of these via Skype these days, so uh, it's great to have you here in person. And so, first of all, let's talk about Pouster. Uh, what does the company do and how would you describe your services and, and, and also how did you start out as a company? Yeah, so um, I mean, Pausta really is a, a creative agency where a lot of the music labels and also movie and entertainment industry um, come to us to idea generate and they want us to come up with new innovative marketing concepts, um, new um, interesting ways of repositioning music artists and making them um, seen in a different light by their audience yeah. or create and capture a new audience and a lot of the time um, we mix video and interactivity together so there's a really strong um, technical team but also a, a hopefully a, a beautiful creative vision as well behind it yeah. um, and that rolls into doing things like music videos, um, interactive music videos, um, like hashtag campaigns, um, just any kind of creative thing we can think up that's like a new way of doing something as well. Um, yeah, usually quite fun to work on for both us, the artist and the management as well. And then hopefully also for the audience at the end of the day. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, it's an interesting company just because, you know, it's a completely new media in the sense that it blends some of the roles that perhaps in the past were being handled by maybe three different teams, and in, in this sense you're doing both the creative side and the technical execution and the distribution of it. So, uh, you know, is this something that is happening all across the board, or did you find that when you started out it was quite a new idea for companies to get on board with, that like they just assigned the company to do all of that stuff? Well, I think when we started out back in 2009, it was kind of like the rise of digital marketing, um, especially like going into recession and stuff like that, and then uh, looking at their traditional marketing, they wanted more like um, quantifiable results and knowing how well things are performing, digital kicking off, um, more spend in digital advertising, and eventually as well, like leading into now, um, with all the app world and the iPhone like apps and all, every, all that digital aspect of it becoming more and more important, has created this new um, area of marketing which is more digital content marketing and that's it is quite new and it's it's um, people are slowly getting more and more involved with thinking up creative concepts within that realm which are beyond just the banner advert or beyond just a, um, a newspaper ad which like works online as well they're kind of like trying to be a bit more clever with it trying to create interesting experiences for users and as far as I know I mean, the big agencies do it, like they come up with um, concepts which kind of do this for brands and stuff like that. And the music labels work with a lot of independent contractors, yeah. like small um, individuals, because often it's like a quick fire, rapid development thing and deploy. Um, whereas I, we kind of come at it from just from growing from that into something a bit bigger. Yeah. Um, we come at it from more of a holistic approach, thinking of an overall campaign. Um, and I, th I think there's quite a few, there's very few companies that specialize in doing that, especially in the UK. Um, I think it's, yeah, you, I mean, you've probably heard of quite a few of them, but um, it's, it's not widely spread just yet. And I think there's definitely an area of growth in the sector for this. And there's plenty of work out there for it, like the music labels and uh, are always requesting for all their artists' ideas. Um, and a lot of the time they don't happen but when they do it can be like a beautiful thing so <laughs> sure. and it it must be difficult also to 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 know that you are under that pressure to deliver a, a product that is of course highly creative because it has to blend into the artist's campaign and it has to enhance it uh, but at the same time you have to deliver metrics at the same time so uh, do you worry about both or is it just the case that when you have a good idea and a good creative idea that just drives traffic by itself i think there's the way it like blends in with the artist's overall vision. A lot of the time with music artists, it's kind of like a beautiful medium for us because a lot of the time the, the visual isn't there. Like if you work on a movie or you work on a brand, there's really strict guidelines for what it looks like. 
Um, there's a hundred eyeballs on the vision of it. Um, whereas music artists, we have a lot more freedom. It's one of the reasons why we still heavily work within that industry. Um, there's a so creative vision wise, there's a lot more flexibility there. It, it might not seem it, but there is compared to other industries. Um, and then in terms of like um, measuring results and effectiveness, obviously um, there's two sides of the coin. One of them is um, how the artist has been perceived and how also the digital world and blogs and press, how they've picked up on it um, to create like um, a feeling of what the artist is about and yeah. to position them a little bit more. And then the other side of it is how much traffic it's got directly um, and how much um, actual results to click to pre-order the album and stuff like that it gets which is another side of the coin as well um, but in terms of how much we worry about that it's it, it, we get a lot of repeat business so it's obviously we're ticking boxes in and or or both areas or yeah sometimes a project wouldn't wouldn't um, get amazing results but they'll, be, they'll have used it for a different purpose or they'll reposition it later down the line or you know, as with all like experimental marketing, it's experimental. So yeah. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it kicks off and massively, and sometimes it doesn't so much. But it's a risk that, um, fortunately, a lot of the labels take that risk because yeah. they they hire us, we do our bit, we, we deliver what we say, and and then it's down to the effectiveness of it. Often, often relies on them as well. Yeah. So they, how well how well they push it and how they put it out there, and so yeah. Thing. And so uh, looking at uh, sort of more practically some of the campaigns that you worked on, uh, let's talk about one of the, your most recent projects actually. Uh, so starting with uh, Newton Faulkner, uh, which you're working on at the moment. So uh, tell me a little bit about, about how you approached uh, that campaign and what, so what's behind that. Yeah, so Newton Faulkner's with Sony. Um, we've worked with Sony on quite a few artists now, like Laura and Bula. And um, yeah, like, so we've kind of like with Newton Faulkner, they came to us and they really wanted um, to work with us on more of a long-term basis rather than doing individual projects. We were saying to them as well, let's create more of a, a strategy over a long period of time. Um, as part of that discussion, there was already um, a, a concept out there for this live streaming, um, actually by Oh My God Management, uh, OMG Management, um, Lottie Faulkner. And she's basically had an idea to live stream Newton's whole album making process. So we got involved with that, um, work, brought live stream in, got um, the whole holistic campaign over it, making the website, organizing all the equipment, um, setting up all the cameras, deciding what would happen. Um, and it's been an absolute roller coaster ride following um, Newton over that period of time. Um, the team, James and Drew, have handled it um, quite heavily. Um, I've been in there for like the technical and um, some of the handling the website build and that side of it as well. Um, and we've got something really exciting coming up in the last week actually. Um, I'm not sure when this goes out, but maybe maybe it's happening now. Um, but um, yeah, it should be really exciting. It's basically controlling aspects of his house using Twitter. So as people awesome. as people tweet, um, things will happen in the house. So like, if you tweet like. Um, it's down to like the really simple stuff, like if you tweet, um, like a he's got a sheep in his house, so I say, so if, you, if you tweet bar, then the sheep bar's in the house for real. Um, if you tweet, um, and, then, and then every t person that tweets as well, eyes light up like animals on the back wall. Yeah. Oh, it's called Studio Zoo, by the way, so it's like an animal theme there. Is this happening uh, this weekend? Or? Um, this should go live on Monday. Oh, okay. um, yeah, so hopefully all fingers crossed um as as you walked in the guy was bringing in circuit boards and stuff our engineer so <laughs> if that, if that gets built awesome. by monday then that'll be an achievement <laughs> but um yeah um it, otherwise you can just log on um studiozoo.newtonfortner.com and watch the live stream um definitely recommend doing it before the campaign finishes um really interesting to see the album making process um We've been told it's world first, so we're really excited, and it's, it's, it's we've been really effective. One of one of our best, most effective campaigns as well. Absolutely, and it's it's interesting to see using live stream uh, outside the context of gigs because that's where most people have used it so far to create an appointment viewing to, uh, around uh, a live event. Uh, but to do it this way, then it means that people can tune in and out, and they don't have to maybe stay for the whole duration. They can just come in, see what's going on, 
go back to work and keep it in the background or something? Yeah, definitely. I think for us, like one of the big things we're excited about is when we do a digital execution, we're always looking at what the user can physically do. So yeah. if we go, how many people have got an iPhone? How many people, if we make an iPhone app, how many people will actually be able to engage with it from this person's audience? Or we go, okay, we want to do something badass with the Connect. But then we've never done that because it's like, how many people are physically going to get a Connect, plug it into their computer and be able to interact with it? Um, but the beauty of the live stream thing is we can actually build crazy technology and live stream that users' interactions. So the person can tweet something and then tw like 20 second delay, I think it is, like 20 seconds later, they see their handle come up in the live stream and something happened because of it. Um, we're, we're looking at doing using that technology for doing things like real life album reveals, so like live stream something and then add more people tweet, the more it reveals the object or something like that in real life. Um, and it's just quite, the live stream for us has opened up a whole um, element of being able to do installation based interactivity yeah. and enabling people from afar using the internet to interact with it, um, which is, yeah, completely separate to just live streaming a gig. Yeah, Although we do that as well. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, looking at uh, some of the other campaigns that you worked on recently, uh, so one of the other ones was uh, the one for Plan B. So that was pretty, a pretty big one for you guys as well. And uh, uh, so what did that consist of? And what angle did you take on that particular project? Yeah, so this was with Atlantic Records and um, Jack Mellowish, pretty legend over there. Um, they, the, over time, we've worked with them more and more. I mean, at first, it was like, we've got an album coming out next week, what can we do? And over time, now we've got to a point where they bring us in right at the start, like before the album's announced, before anything's happening, and they go, what's the best way to do this? And we all sit down, we cut brainstorm with them. We, as a team, have to go away, come up with loads of ideas, go back in. Like, there's a lot of back and forth with that, coming up with different concepts. Eventually, we, um, with this one, we arrived at, um, for his album, Ill Manners, there was a, a big drive for him to want to um, reach out to the youth culture that feel like they're being ignored um, after the London riots. And it was just before the Olympics, and there was a, a lot of sentiment there that they were being... Um, not listened to. So our campaign basically involved um, to allowing that tweet in, uh, Twitter again, <laughs> tweet in um, anything they want on the subject. Um, the album is called Ill Manners. It's got quite a lot of um, meaning behind it. Um, yeah, but Plan B himself is quite a, um, he's got a lot of story in the stuff he writes about. Um, so it really gave the people a voice. They, they tweet in. We then got a graffiti artist to spray paint up all the tweets onto a, a big board and filmed it. Um, and then we took that footage and actually projected their tweets being graffitied up onto buildings. So using a projector like onto massive buildings around London, we drove it around um, when it was dark and just projected their messages onto everywhere. And then. As, we, as they appeared, we retweet them their images of, um, for example, we projected onto the Houses of Parliament with um, people's tweets massive over the whole of the Houses of Parliament, retweeting at them, and they were like, the users were like, oh my God, what the hell? <laughs> so really, really, really engaging for them, I think. And um, yeah, it, re it really worked well as a campaign and uh, in releasing a YouTube video was quite an interesting um, angle because obviously there's only X amount of people which will see it on the night, but um, the real marketing tool is that YouTube video, it's the tweets that go out, it's the people retweeting, and it's the discussion that gets created, yeah. um, rather than the physical act of doing it. So. Absolutely. And looking at uh, how the labels especially are placing these campaigns, is there a lot of push to maximize revenues on the exposure of the artists, or is it, is it, are they taking it as an awareness campaign and then they build on that for the release itself? Uh, I think it varies, yeah. there's, there's it. it different objectives with different artists um, a lot of the time they'll people will come to us and say we've got this problem and it's not always about sales um, a lot of the time with emerging artists and new artists there's um, a lot of push to create an image for them like position them in an interesting way yeah. and also to make them shine out amongst the rest of the people who are doing a similar thing and oftentimes like we very rarely get asked the actual clicks on the pre-order button on the website and uh, I mean a lot of the time now we're trying to 
advise clients against putting that at the forefront. It makes it feel more like an ad campaign, less of a fun initiative, less of something for people to get involved in. Um, so yeah, I mean, in terms of like driving sales, um, I kind of ironically, it's not a huge aspect of it. I think a lot, a lot of the stuff we're doing is seen as a a tool to, yeah, a tool to make the artist seem interesting in a way. And and, and as a byproduct, you know, that could affect sales and get more. It's it's more like drive to people to buy it and stuff like that. I mean. It, the, the Faulkner stuff though works really great because people listen to the, him making the album and then they feel a connection with it and then they want to own it. So that's a huge uh, bonus for that campaign. Um, with the um, Plan B one, it was a lot more about getting, really creating that connection with his audience yeah. and giving them that voice and doing something really outlandish with, they put a tiny bit of effort in and we give them a huge reward. Um, so yeah, it's kind of awesome. And uh, finally, the third artist I want to talk about today, just because it's another relatively you know recent campaign and it's still ongoing, is was one you're doing with Rudimental, and so that's a, that's a, a, again a different approach. Of course, so they're, they're all they're all different. They're all their own things. So uh, what approach you take with uh, Rudimental, and how is that campaign panning out? Yeah, so Rudimental was really about um, it was on that side of the coin of trying to get their audience to be engaged in a, uh, a more visual way and also to make them um, contribute um, more of an arty crowd um, and to really try and capture people's um, creativity a little bit more. And the album's called Home and the campaign we came up with was um, This Is Home, hashtag This Is Home and anyone can contribute to that via Instagram uh, Twitter, Vine, um, any yeah, so any of the hashtag platforms, and then any of the images they submit get displayed on this massive um, responsive website, yeah. and users can see all their content on there. And th that one, the the way that was interesting um, was we said to people, "Tell us your idea of home." And at the start, the the tweets that came in were relatively. Um, interesting i mean yeah. uh, if you go to the website um and scroll all the way to the bottom then there's some the content's kind of you know you look when we started off we were like is this gonna work like people are just submitting random stuff it's not great but then over the course of time um when we started selecting people we started giving away like um uh, an album a uh, signed album to people and said here's a signed album here's the winner and it was of like a cityscape and it was beautiful um, then all the tweets after that were cityscapes. Uh, they like you can imagine like the next like twenty tweets were all people posting their ideas of cityscapes, and then we picked a different one that was something completely different, and it ended up um, you know over the course of time to the last um, winner. The the submissions are beautiful, like the like landscapes, the oceans. We kind of like changed um, what people are contributing to it. Um, a little bit in a kind of like it kind of like a cheating way like giving away winners and stuff like that but but by the end as a campaign by the end if people land on that website and they see it they look at them visuals and they say that's rudimental you know it's like it's uh, it's like really heartfelt images really beautifully done um, and it, it's as a campaign it's really helped in that way it's shaping um, also to like the more of the RT audience got involved and started submitting more RT shots and that kind of thing and um, we're looking now at possibly um, rolling that out more worldwide. It's very UK focused. Um, some of the best submissions were from international because, um, you know, they've got amazing sunsets and stuff. <laughs> no offense to us, but uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, like the international audiences now and the international label, um, Warner label, internationally Atlantic, etc. They they're really looking at leveraging it worldwide, and we're perhaps going to roll that out on a bigger scale as well. Awesome. And finally, I wanted to talk about um, where you know you serve the campaigns that you that you that you're doing. Of course. People are always asking me about the platforms, you know, where should I place my videos? Of course, uh, YouTube is the obvious answer, but there's a lot of other places where you can put your videos on and maybe places that can drive better quality traffic for you as well as an artist, uh, for example, your website. So, so how, do you, how do you 
leverage that and how do you balance uh, having the most exposure possible with having the best platform for, for the job? Yeah, well, the, obviously a big factor of it is the content you're putting up. So um, a lot of the time we kind of look at it as the, we look at what the idea is and then decide what technology to use for it. Um, I'd say like Vimeo is amazing for um, getting more towards that more sophisticated audience, um, probably more technically minded as well, um, a bit more creative. Um, and also the player as well is a lot nicer for skinning and c control and customization. Um, YouTube is like a lot of the labels these days, the, the, the main focus on YouTube is to get play counts so that they can, the radio plays, they can get radio plays because they go, oh, it's a big track. It's got loads of plays on YouTube. Um, it's kind of like, a, I see that almost as old school now, um, looking at it that way. Um, you know, does, does do radio plays translate strongly? I, I don't know. Maybe they do, but um, they they still they still do it, but not as larger extent as like maybe a year ago. Um, and then the other way is I like that we use a lot is custom players. So it, obviously, if you're doing something a bit more interactive or a bit more unique, then you want to um, really make a a custom player so you can put that interactivity within it. Um, a lot of the time, we've done that with. Um, we did it with like sub focus where we allowed the user to manipulate the video in real time. Um, to be honest, that was a wrapper around a YouTube player. <laughs> so you can still controlling a YouTube video, but in an interesting way. Um, but I'd say the, the biggest way to drive traffic is to do something different. And the easiest way to do something different is to break out of the mold of the standard players. So then you can do something really like crazy or interact like, yeah. I, Personally, I'm all about interactivity, so I'm going to say that. But <laughs> yeah, if you do something interactive, I'll probably check it out. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks so much for your time. And, and uh, hopefully, uh, while editing the video, I'm going to be able to place some of the uh, uh, you know the showreel uh, at the bottom so that people can check out what you're doing while they're watching the show at the same time. And uh, thanks so much for your time. It was great having you on. It's uh, pouster.com. Uh, no, yeah. sorry. Pouster.com? Yeah, pouster.com. Yeah. Um, at Pauster on Twitter. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Thanks, uh, C. And go and check out Pauster.com or drop them a tweet and see if there's anything that they can do that is uh, interesting for you as well. Thanks very much. If you enjoyed the show, remember to check out our weekly music tech news show on digitalmusictrends.com.